Previously on the bill. So, if I asked you out to dinner, would you say yes? He thinks you're a free agent, Sam. Listen, I'm just looking out for you. Oh. Cheers, I promised I'd look after you. Just because he's inside doesn't mean he won't deal with me. Cool down, shall we? So, what's going on? It's that lunatic you're asking, not me. See this? That sound to him. No, I never touched her. But she just came over, started laying into me, smashing everything up. People like her shouldn't be allowed out. <laughs> you're going to have to you for a throw, right? <laughs> you do not have to say anything better. Can you say... All right, right mate, come on, pack your gear up. I'm going to you as well. So, what was the altercation about? I told you. This. Mm, looks nasty. Tell me about it. The rubbish he's selling caused it. For the benefit of the tape, can you tell us what happened? Yesterday he was working the same pitch. Normally I wouldn't give a bloke knocking out snide perfume the time of day. Anyway, somehow we got talking and he gets me to smell some of his stuff. Said it was a new line, going to be a bestseller, you know. Let's say you bought a bottle. Well, there's no way I can afford the real gear. Then this morning I tried a bit and this happened. Are you alright? Stings like you wouldn't believe. When I get out of here, I'm straight down the health centre. And you're definite that nothing else could have caused this allergy? I'm telling you, it's that perfume. No doubt about it. Present for you. Oh, lucky me. What is it? Counterfeit perfume and aftershave. Downstairs, we got a Vinnie Floyd. He's a bloke trying to flog it. And Carol Vaughan. She's a very dissatisfied customer. Both arrested for a freight. She reckons this stuff has brought her up in a nasty rash. Thought we'd better hand it on to you. We've no idea any more victims there may be. Well, thanks very much. Leave it with me. Cheers. All right, so. Yep. Stu, what have you got there? Well, that is a fake, mate. Hmm? Well, some of these are good nowadays. Better than the real thing. Yeah, if you say so, Phil. Hello there. Hi. Hmm. Those painkillers. Yeah. Do you want one? No, I want two. <laughs> That is the last time I'm drinking red wine. Well, you ordered the third bottle, Nixon. And the brandies. I was having a good time. So was I. Caffeine? Yes, please. OK. <laughs> What's this? Uh, it's counterfeit, Gov. Uh, apparently it's brought the woman out in some sort of rash. Well, thanks for telling me. Oh, sorry, mate. Did I not mention that? The guy who's selling it is downstairs waiting to be interviewed. All right. Phil, you can take that. Me? Yeah. I'd say you're the resident expert on cheap scent. Take Zane with you. Yes, Gov. Mrs K, I'm PC Keen. This is PC Hardy. You're both very young. So you've had your purse stolen, is that right? It was locked, you know. What was? The door. I locked it when I went, and then when I came back, it wasn't. When you went where? Marjorie's. My friend across the road, I went over for coffee, then when I came back, it was gone. Your purse? Yes. My... P my pension was in it. And the door was open even though you'd locked it before you left? Yes. Now look, I'm going to go and check with neighbours, see if they saw anything. Okay. Now don't worry, OK? It's not the first time it's happened. There were other things. Mum? Yeah. Mum, are you all right? Somebody's been here taking my purse. Uh, Malcolm K, Rose's son. Now, have you looked for it yeah. properly? It's gone. Perhaps we should have a check around. No, I left it there on the table. Couldn't hurt to make sure, though, would it, Rose? Come through. this um, about my own mother but she's starting to become very forgetful it, it's her age i suppose she, she'll have either lost her purse or more likely it will turn up at the back of a cupboard somewhere she says somebody's been inside the house she went to a neighbor's for coffee and when she came back the door was unlocked she won't have locked it in the first place i do worry about leaving her here on her own sometimes 
Anyway, that's not your problem. That's mine. And I'm sorry. I think, I think it's been a waste of your time. What did her son have to say? Reckon she's going a bit senile and the purse was never stolen in the first place. I thought she was a bit... Lewis! <laughs> Look, I'm just calling like I see it. How did you get on? Well, a window cleaner said he saw a woman parked outside here in a white car. But that's it. Um, it ain't the crime of the century. And if her own son's saying it's a wild goose chase, we might as well leave it. Well, what if it's not? Look, just because she's dotted doesn't mean she's not telling the truth. We have to log it anyway. Well, are you saying you believe her or you feel safe for her? Both. Right, whatever. Well, we ain't got enough evidence to go in anyway. Got a CCTV camera over there. See if your white car shows up on that. Right, what patch do you normally work? Somewhere near Whitegate. Look, I was attacked. What are you going to do about that? Your neck's blistering. What? Your neck is blistering. Right, that is from where I put on your stuff. Now, how many other people have complained? I don't know what you mean. What, you having a laugh? The woman who smashed your stock, the same thing's happened to her arm. Now, I can't imagine we're the only ones. <sighs> there were a couple of people who came back to me. <laughs> I just thought they were trying it on. Where'd you get it? It was this bloke I see, sometimes in the pub. I don't know his name. How many other people does he supply? I don't know that either. Look, Vinny, we need to work out how much of this stuff is out there so we can get it back before somebody sustains a serious injury. Look, you're talking to the wrong bloke. I just buy a box or two every now and then, you know. What, from this bloke in the pub with no name? The bloke that you're going to end up doing a couple of years for. He's called Barry. That's all I know. Listen, you're not helping yourself here, mate. Look, I've seen him selling his gear on Penn Market. Well, what does he look like? Black. He's 20s. Small. Right, this better not be a wind-up. I'm telling you, it's the best chance you'll ever find on him. Don't scratch it. Leela's still tied up with the assault victim. She said to just carry on. OK. This looks like it here. We can find out who she is from the index number. She could live in the area, or maybe she's just visiting someone. Maybe Rose will recognise her. She could be going anywhere. Yeah, she could be going to the K's. Yeah, and maybe not. Why are you determined to believe that I'm wrong about this? Easy. Sorry. What's bugging you? Come, you haven't been yourself all day. What's up? I finished with Matt last night. Was he cool about it? No, he wasn't cool about it. So what, you having second thoughts? No, he won't get none. Then, Em, you made the right play. Do you think I did? Definitely. If it ain't working, why hang in there? Huh? Let's just get back to this. This woman's car was seen outside your house. We haven't been able to find her. Do either of you know her? No. Mrs. Kelly's daughter from the post office. She, she emigrated to New Zealand, Mum, 15 years ago. Oh, looks a bit like her. She had red hair. Oh. We think her name's Kate Jones. I'll make a cup of tea. Yeah, good idea, Mum. You think she's got something to do with my mother's purse going missing? Uh, it's a long shot, Mr. Kay. We got that from the CCTV camera from across the road. It's probably that she was in the wrong place at the right time. Don't suppose the purse has turned up, has it? Not yet, but it was a month before we found her glasses. And do you know where they were? In the freezer. <laughs> what did the FME say? Yeah, he's sure it's a burn and not an allergic reaction. So he sprayed some stuff on it. But he said I was lucky I only used a tiny bit. You could always wear a cravat. <laughs> so you rang around the hospitals? Yeah, um, a doctor at St Hugh's treated a woman who had similar blistering. She said that she bought the perfume from a vendor on Oxgate Street. Well, that's our patch. Let's hope this thing is localised for now, otherwise we might have a big problem. Yeah, they're going to call me if they get anyone else in and I put the other hospitals on standby. Right, let's start with Penn Market, see if we can find this barrel. Good, keep me posted. <coughs> right, uniform wants to look at her body. Oh, it's one here with a hangover. I just hope this corpse hasn't got a better colour than me. <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Who else went to the pub with them last night? What do you mean? Stay at them. I thought everybody had gone. Well, not me, mate. Uh, anyway, I think they went out for dinner. Stuart asked me if I knew of any good Italians.
Over there. But which one's our boy? I don't believe it. What? what? The one on the left is Ches Williams. Remember the Damon Kerr case? The major drug dealer? Yeah. Ches is the witness who put him away. Is he the guy who got shot? When I was supposed to be looking after him. Right, but he's a dealer, isn't he? Well, a street dealer. That's how we first met, you know, when I was undercover. I mean, I've tried to contact him a few times since the retrial, but he didn't want to know. Right, the other one must be Barry. Just keep it casual, yeah? Yeah. Excuse me. Hey, 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 hey! Hi! Stop! Please, please! Get back! Back, get back. away! Move! Please! Get out of the way! Move! Police officer coming through! Move! Move. Police! Get out of the way! Move! Please, step back! Stop! Get him! Right, you need to speak to your mate, Chess. He's only going to talk to me, is he? Chess. Same. How you doing? It's been better. I thought you were going abroad. Yeah, well, I didn't exactly work out, and I did it. Sorry about that, man. Listen, I was wondering. Uh, how you were getting on? It seems like you're doing well. It's an honest living. That's good. I'm pleased for you. Great. Now, was there anything in particular? It's just that I've got a business to run, you know? Yeah. Um, you know the guy that you were talking to before, selling the perfume, man? Um, his name's Barry, is that right? Are you serious? Look, you are the last person I'm going to be talking to about this, all right? But if I don't, someone else will. You've got some nerve, you know that. I mean, you do remember what happened the last time I helped you. The stuff that he's selling is burning people, all right? They're having to go to A&E. I need to find this guy. I look, all I know is that sometimes he pitches up near me. Whatever else he's into, I, I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't want to know. I'm out of all of that now. Now, if there's nothing else, I've got business to run, excuse me. Hiya. So, what we got? A body. I see one male, about 50. We arrived just after the paramedics. FME's on the way, but it looks like a heart attack. We've got Mr and Mrs Gibb in the house. Mr Gibb wasn't here at the time. Mrs Gibb made the emergency call. We, uh, got a bit of a problem. She says she's no idea who the man is. Right. He died here in the house. Well, apparently, yeah. Was there any ID? Didn't seem to be carrying any. That's why we thought you'd love to take this one on. The uh, scenes of crime are on the way. Okay. Sorry, but is this going to take much longer? Mr Gibb. DS Nixon, DS Turner, Sun Hill. We'd like a word, please. Shall we? Oh, uh... I wouldn't. Not in there. It's uh, my mate here. Come through to the kitchen. Uh, would you like coffee? I'm making some. Lovely. Please. So, can you tell us what happened? My wife was here and there was a knock on the door. So you weren't here at the time? At our cottage in Kent. Didn't get back until a little while ago. Then it would be better if we could hear it from Mrs. Gibb. Absolutely, of course. It's just that she's a little shaken up. Let me do this, Stanley. It's OK. You take your time. Well, like Matthew just told you, the doorbell rang. You knock at the door, you said, Elaine. Oh, uh, that's what I meant, sorry. It's all right. You had a shock. Uh, I answered it, and there was a man standing there. And you didn't know him, Elaine? Uh, no. So how did he get in? I asked him in. Told her. Damn fool thing, letting a stranger into the house. Could have been anybody. He said he wanted to talk about a housing problem. I'm on the council. I have this open door policy for the people I represent. Right, but if your husband wasn't here, why did you let him in? Uh, I was going to check Matthew's diary to see when would be a convenient time. So did you ask his name? I, I was going to do that once I had the diary in front of me, but when I came back from the study with it, he collapsed on the floor. When was this? About nine o'clock. So what did you do then? She dialed 999, of course. But uh, it was too late. He was dead. Uh, they will take him away, won't they? Well, I'm afraid we can't do that just yet. But why not? You can see how distressed my wife is, but knowing there's a corpse in our living room. I understand that, Mr. Gibb, but we need to take a look at the body ourselves. And then you'll have it removed. As soon as we can. 
Em, there's a seat there. And uh, I've got somewhere else I need to be. What's the matter with her? I don't know. Ah, uh, what should I? See her then. Her what? She done met last night. Well, you didn't know. No, it's news to me. So how come you're asking me how she's been? You know, no reason. Yes, there is. Come on, man, what's going on? We went out for a drink last night, you know, one thing led to another. What, you guys slept together? No, no, we, we just had a kiss and that. And that, what does that mean? Hey, I've just had some news on the phone. I've had another victim in, so this time the guy's got an aftershave in his eye. I think it's blinded him. Right, OK. Reg was right. That's it. Tell you what, searching a corpse and a hangover cure, is it? Mm, tell me about it. OK, so we got what looks like a household key and some cash. No matter how quickly you left the house, would you put your watch on the wrong wrist? No. No. Well, his is. You can see the mark where he usually wears it. And this. You can see he normally wears the buckle there. It's worn. So? He's either dressed himself in a real hurry or... Or he hasn't dressed himself. And if that's the case, we can't even be certain that he died here. I don't think Mr and Mrs Gibb are being completely honest with us. Just need a couple of details. Thank you. Right, I've just seen the doctor. And they're treating two other people with similar burns. Now, one bought some perfume in Penn Market. The other one used a freebie at some club in Slate Road. OK. Well, let's hope he can help. Sean? This is my colleague, D.S. Hunter. Listen, I know you're in a lot of pain, so I'll make this as brief as possible. You got aftershave in your eye, right? Burnt me. We need to know where you bought it. I didn't. So where did it come from? Got it from my work. Where do you work? Men's clerk room. Cayman Club. The pain's getting worse. I need the doctor. OK, thanks for your help. We'll get some. Mr. Dalton. That's me. I'm D.S. Hunter. This is D.C. Nadir's son, huh? Yeah, I guessed. We've been talking to one of your staff, Sean Myers. Oh, yeah. I heard what happened. How is the boy? Oh, he's in a bad way. And one of your punters from last night was also treated in some news. I can't believe it, you know. I've been tapped right up with an eye. I cleaned out both the cloakrooms. Everything's in that box over there. We'll take all that if you don't mind. No, you help yourself. Save me the job of binning it. Where did you get it from? Uh, one of the lads on the door offered it to me. It's a good price, so I thought I'll have a bit of that. Uh-huh. And what was his name? They call him Little Pete, I think. You think? I don't employ directs, I use an agency. So apart from a couple of regulars, we get different guys every night. So what was the name of the agency? Tough Security. We've got an office on Maidle Street near the Moon and Sparrow. And you can tell them from me that I am not happy. I've got a reputation to think about, haven't I? Yeah, of course you have. Why do you want to sit with me and Will? What do you mean? When we are at refs. Maybe I just wanted to be on my own. Well, maybe you're avoiding one of us. You see, you don't have to be a cop to realise it's a guilty face, you know. Well, I wasn't ready to face Will yet. Why not? Because last night we kissed. Is that why you broke up with Matt? No. No. I don't really know why I did it, actually. Matt and I weren't getting on very well. Now I feel incredibly guilty. So you won't be going back for seconds, then? No. Definitely not. <sighs> well, good. I mean, you probably need your space right now, innit? No. No, actually, I need some distraction. A bit of fun. Really? Mm. OK. So how about... You take me for a drink after the work. You take me. <laughs> All right, go on then. Hey guys, a uh, Mrs. K called asking for you two. Something about a stolen purse, yeah? See, that's the problem with mad people. Be nice to them, they don't leave you alone. <laughs> hey. You remember us? Sorry about earlier. I know I want much help. That's all right. How you feeling now? Been better. You're out for us asking a few more questions, though. I've told you all I can. Sean, you said that you got the aftershave from work, the Cayman Club. Now, we've spoken to the owner, Chris Dalton, and he says that he got it from a doorman. 
So we were hoping that you might be able to tell us who this doorman is. No. At least take a minute to think about I it. I said I can't help you anymore. Sean, we're trying to find the guy responsible for blinding you. Please, leave me alone. Who are you covering for? I don't want to get involved. It's this doorman, isn't it? You're afraid of him. No, I just don't need the grief. So if it wasn't the doorman, who was it? Chris Dalton. I'm right, aren't I? There wasn't a doorman. I went in early last night. I was about when Dalton had the aftershave delivered. He didn't know I was there. The delivery guy, did Dalton use his name? He ain't gonna like me talking to you. He ain't the sort of person to get the wrong side of. You just said he didn't know that you were there. Did you get a name? No, he just told the guy who brought it in that there was more work for him if he wanted it. What else did he say? Nothing. That's all, honestly. So the bloke who delivered the aftershave, did you get a look at him? Short, black guy. Looks like we're back to Barry then. He had a walking stick. Sounds more like Chase Williams to me. I'll wait for that. Okay. What's the verdict? They're getting very jittery in there. Well, with good reason. This guy's been dead a lot longer than Lane's been saying. Could be up to ten hours as much. 4 a.m.? Yeah, roughly, yeah. What's up? Well, I thought I had a bit of chocolate. <laughs> I'm starving. Sorry. So he's been there since the early hours? Matthew was in Kent. Do you think it's Elaine's lover? If she's dressed in, the guy was naked at some point, right? So it makes sense. This doesn't seem a time. Yeah, well, the quiet ones are always the worst. Oh, you'd know, would you? <laughs> Look, whatever happened, there's more to this than she's telling us. Look, the body has been moved as well. This isn't where he died. Wait till you see this. Been strangled. Maybe. Well, there are two similar marks around his ankles as well. All made just before he died, according to the CSM. And we need to get a special postmortem done. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I found these things under the bed. Okay, his name's Johnny Jarman, uh, dressed in Fulham 23, Swallow Row Willis. This is the guy. Mm. I think this woman should start telling the truth, don't you? Yeah. Let's get her arrested, stop her messing us about. Elaine Gibb, I'm arresting you on suspicion of murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do Matthew. not mention when questioned something. You've you... got nothing to worry about. You later rely on in court. I want my husband. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mrs Gibb. I've told you what happened. If they want to keep going over the same ground, you'll just have to tell them again. You do realise what a big mistake you're making. Well, I guess we'll figure that out soon enough, won't we? Back to work, there, Mrs. K. Yes, that's why I called you. He thinks I'm mad, you know, but I'm not. I'm sure he doesn't think any such thing. All right, I'm not as sharp as I was, but I know what's going on. He wants to get rid of me, put me in one of those homes. Has he said so? Oh, he's got all the brochures. I've seen them in his briefcase. It was. It, it was him who took my purse. Why do you say that? I saw it. After you were here before, he shot off somewhere and when he came back, I watched him put the purse in his bureau. Are you sure about that? I told you I'm not daft. He's done it before as well. Taking your purse? Go oh, other things. Moved them, hidden them. Well, I was just telling you about it when he came in this morning. Is the bureau locked now? Always. He doesn't want me rummaging in there, does he? We could try and open it for you, but we'd need your permission first. In writing, if you need it. I don't think that's necessary. <laughs> there. What did I tell you? Anything better than bacon and egg sandwiches after a night out on the pot? Mm. There is, I don't know about it. <laughs> so, how are we going to handle this? So, finding John's wallet proves that she knows more about him than she lets on. Mm. And we know he didn't die where she said he did. Actually, I'd like to challenge her on all of it. Okay. 
Okay, but let's, let's hold back on the right marks. The pathologist confirms that that's the cause of death, and we can produce that when she's really up against the wall. Mm. You've got what? <laughs> some sauce on your chin. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't want any more, actually. So you got the old hangover munchies, ace, Stu? Shouldn't drink if you can't handle it. His name isn't Stu. It suits him, though, doesn't it? You know, Stu as in thick and greasy. What is your problem? Nothing. So, how was your night out with your toy boy? Did a good time out by all? Or did he have to be home by half past ten? Sam. Ready? Yeah. I've run Dalton through Intel. Nothing. We would have been on to him hours ago if you weren't so keen on believing your mate Chess. Well, he seemed genuine. No, you were too soft on him. I thought I could trust him, to be honest with me. We were pretty close once, you know. So you're letting past history cloud your judgment? Well, maybe Dalton's operating from the club. Look, if he's got the stuff on the premises, he wouldn't need it to be delivered, would he? He's probably using the Cayman to launder the profits. Well, I'm going to go and see Dalton and find out exactly what he knows. I want you to get to the market and do exactly the same, all right? And on this time, find out the truth, yeah? You knew who this man was all along, didn't you, Elaine? And that's his wallet. You've got this wrong. Now, you said that he was a stranger that knocked at your door at 9am, when in fact he was dead in the early hours of this morning. Not only that, that was found under your bed. <sighs> he just died. OK, let's start with what was Johnny Jarman doing at your home? The two of you having an affair? No. Look, we need to try and make some sense of this. Because, let's face it, everything you've told us so far is a lie. I met him in a bar last night. Which bar? Heart to Heart. It's in the West End. We just started talking. I'd never seen him before. Mm. And what were you doing in this place? I go there sometimes when Matthew's away. Just for a quiet drink on the way home from work. So you and Johnny were talking? Then what happened? We ended up back at the house. Um, I think I was just feeling lonely. And he was a nice guy. Uh, we only went back for another drink, but... Uh, well, one thing led to another. You know how it is. So you slept together? Uh, yes. And uh, then afterwards, he said he felt ill and went to the bathroom. When he didn't come out, I went to look. He was lying dead on the bathroom floor. What time is this? Uh, about half three this morning. But you didn't call an ambulance until nine, Elaine. I panicked. I felt for a pulse and there wasn't one. Then what did you do? Phone Matthew. Took me a little bit of time to get my courage up. Uh, I asked him to come home straight away. What was his reaction when he got back? Uh, how do you mean? Well, there was a dead body on his bathroom floor, Elaine. The body of a man his wife had just met in a bar. Oh, I was hysterical, just begging him to forgive me. I swore to him I'd never cheated on him before. Uh, he, he said it was a mess, but that we could get through it. Oh, that's, that's very understanding. Yes. Uh, we, we came up with the story about Johnny knocking on the door. We dressed him and moved him downstairs. I didn't realise his wallet was under the bed. And, uh, well, you know the rest. OK. Well, we're going to speak to your husband. Then we'll get back to you. We've spoken to Elaine, and now we'd like your side of the story. It's as I told you. I'd been away in Kent, and I got back to find Elaine upset, and this man dead in the living room. You see, the problem with that is it doesn't quite tally with what your wife is telling us. Why? What she said? It doesn't matter what she said. We just want to get to the bottom of what really happened. Are you sure you're telling the truth? Or would you like to start again? It's as I told you. <sighs> OK, what time did you get home? Just after 9.30, and I found Elaine upset. All she'd say was, in the living room, he's dead. Kept repeating it. Then what did you do? Went to have a look. 
and that's when I first saw the body. Just after that, the paramedics came. And you've never seen this man before? <laughs> no. Look, what's happening here? I'm not under arrest, am I? Why? Should you be? What do you want now? I'll tell you what I don't want, and that is to be messed about. You're involved in this perfume racket, aren't you? Uh, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so how come I've got a witness who's ID'd you as a person who delivered a case of that stuff to the Cayman Club? Huh? No, no, no. Don't even try to deny it, Chess. All right? I don't want to hear it. Look. It was just a one-off. Yeah, of course it was. So much for earning an honest living. You've made a right mug out of me, you know that. Yeah, look, Barry offered me £50 to do a little delivery. OK, and I was desperate. I needed the cash. Oh, come on, Chez. You've just scored a load of compensation. No, no, it hasn't come through. I'm telling you, I haven't got a penny. Well, I can see that. No, no, this is my friend's stall. I'm just running it for him for a few quid. And to be honest, it's a bit of a struggle at that. You know what? I really hope that you'd sorted your life out. You know that. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm trying, Zane. There's not a lot going on for a man like me down at the job centre now. Look, why didn't you just go away with your girlfriend and your son like you said you were going to do? Because my girlfriend took my son and walked out on me two months ago. I'm sorry. Save it. You care about as much as she did. No, that's not true. Oh, God, be serious. If you hadn't come down here today, I would never have seen you again. I tried to contact you. Oh, you left a couple of messages. Big deal. And then you gave up on me just like her. Except she left me to pay a whole heap of bills. So now I'm up to my neck in debt as well. All right. What do you owe? Let's put it like this. If I don't come up with two grand by tomorrow, I can say goodbye to my flat. You just did this one job for Barry, yeah? Yes. And what was your involvement? Come on, Chez, I'm trying to help you out here. Oh, all right, look. Barry gave me the perfume and he gave me the address of a club that he wanted it delivered to. The Cayman Club? Yeah. And that was where some guy, um, Dalton, I think his name was, he offered me some more work. I thought about it, but in the morning when I saw Barry, I told him no. So would you say that Dalton's pretty near the top of the tree? Yeah, I reckon so. All right, that's all I need to know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean you're not going to arrest me? I'd say if anyone deserves a break, it's you. Emma, we're trying to call you. Have you? Yeah, a couple of times. You all right? Yeah, fine. You sure? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Look, I heard about you and Matt splitting up. I know it must be difficult for you, but there's no need to feel guilty about what happened between us. When you kissed me, you realised you were the wrong guy. You did something about it. Amazing. We didn't split up with Matt because of you. I'm sorry, Will. I like you, but I never thought I'd cheat on anyone, especially not Matt. I split up with him because we just weren't working anymore. I think kissing you just made me realise that. That's what was that, an experiment? No. It was a mistake. I think we both know it shouldn't have happened. Do we? Em. Malcolm Kay says he'll be here as soon as he gets someone to cover from shop. Is he alright with that? He doesn't understand why he's coming in. Neither do I. You cool? Still mates though, eh? I found the warehouse they're operating out of. Where? It's the Golding Industrial Estate. And they're definitely distributing. Looks like they might be manufacturing as well. All right, so get yourself down here. We need backup as well, yeah? Right, Elaine. When you said you met Johnny Jarman at the Heart to Heart Bar, was that the truth? Yes. Nothing you want to add? <laughs> no. We've spoken to Matthew, and he's sticking to the original story, insisting he wasn't home before 9.30 a.m. And if neither you or your husband had ever met Mr. Jum before or had any previous knowledge of him, then how do you explain this? I'm showing Elaine Exhibit RG1. Now, this is an email sent from your husband to Mr. Jarman two days ago. It was found in his flat, and we'd like to know what it means. What's going on, Elaine? Because it isn't looking very good for either of you. 
it's uh, <clears throat> something Matthew and I like to do. What is? I <sighs> sleep with other men while he watches. Matthew arranges it. I think Johnny was a friend of a friend. And you're a willing participant in this, are you? Yes. We're not doing any harm. Well, the man died. You think I don't know that? One minute he's in my bed, the next minute he's dead on the floor. How do you think that makes me feel? But he... It wasn't our fault. He, he just collapsed. All right, before or after the rope was tied around his neck? That was Johnny's idea. Apparently he got off on it. He must have seen the marks around his ankles as well. If you had nothing to do with his death, why not just be straight from the beginning? I wanted to. I didn't want this to go on any longer than it had to. But Matthew said we couldn't. I told him we'd get found out, but he insisted. I don't understand. He's a counsellor, isn't he? He was worried about his public image. Well, like he said, how would this look if it got out? Are right, you in position? Yeah. Back door's covered. Right. Go, go, go. Right, police, don't move! Right, stand where you are! Stand where you are! Right, turn your back! Self move! Get out, boy! 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 Get out, Nice to meet you, last Barry. Hi, Sarge. Hundreds of bottles here. Lifetime supply for you. Yeah, well, I think I'll give that a miss, don't you? Yeah, let's go. Come on! Zane, we need to get a lorry for this stuff. What's that? Who says crime doesn't pay, eh? <laughs> Make sure you don't lose, don't you? Sarge. Thanks for coming in. Oh, it's just the least I can do. I, I must say I'm impressed. You seem to be getting to an awful lot of effort over a missing purse. You haven't found it, then? No, no, it's, uh, it'll turn up. It already has, in your bureau. Your mum called us back to the house and she said she saw you put it there. I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. If it was in one of my drawers, then it must have been there all the time. But how did it get there? My mother, of course. She'll have forgotten, she gets confused. But you've got the only key. Mr K. Living with your mum must be hard work sometimes. So I know you didn't put it for nothing. Just tell us where. Sorry to interrupt. Pissy Hardy. Rose Kay's just called again. She says she's apprehended a burglar. What happened, Rose? She was in my kitchen going through the cupboards. Didn't know I was behind her till I hit her with the frying pan. It's cast iron. I've called an ambulance. It's the woman from the CCTV photo. You got anything? Yeah, I've got pops. Oh, God, no. Kate? You do know her, then? Yeah. She's my girlfriend. If they've confirmed he died of a heart attack, then I really can't see what the problem is. Oh, can't you? Well, a man's dead. He'll have a family. <laughs> I don't know what you two are thinking. All right, Sergeant, you've said your piece. And now, if you don't mind, we'd like to go. I've got a meeting to attend, and Elaine needs to get some rest. Hmm. Right there. Well, we'll be in touch. What for? I thought this matter was concluded. No. Now, this matter will be referred to the CPS. They'll be deciding whether to prosecute you two for wasting police time. This is ridiculous. Come on, Matthew, I'd like to go now. Have a nice evening. Dr. Brecken should be okay, apart from the mother of all headaches. What was she doing in my kitchen? I think that's something we'd all like to know. 
well, Kate and me, we've been seeing each other for a couple of years. Rubbish! I'd have known. I didn't want you to know, Mum. I didn't want you to worry. Why would she worry? I was ill a few years back. Cancer. All clear now, but my wife at the time, Valerie, well, she couldn't take the pressure. She left me. Never did like her. She abandoned him when he needed her most. Yeah, but you were there for me, Mum. You got me through it. Oh. When you had that fall last year, well, I, well, I didn't want you worrying that I was going to leave you. Or worrying that Kate might be another Valerie. So I, I didn't tell you about her. She wanted me to, to move in with her. I told her I, I, I couldn't leave you. So, so she came up with the idea of, of a home. Her dad was in one, a nice place. But I wouldn't have done it, though. Yeah, I know. Malcolm, you still haven't told us why she was in the house. She got fed up with waiting. Had copies of my keys cut. <gasps> and st started doing things that make me think Mum was losing it. Cheeky mare! Oh, I'm glad I walloped her. How long have you known about this? I realised this morning when you showed me the pictures from the CCTV. I confronted her about it. That's when you put the purse back? Yeah, I thought I'd give it a, a, a day or two and uh, say I found it down the back of the sofa. So you'd think you'd made a genuine mistake. But Kate still came back. I shouted her. She was upset. Well, I shouldn't have done it. I was angry. It's all my fault. Don't blame her. Do you love her? What, what's going to happen? Are either of them going to be charged? I can't say for sure, but under the circumstances, probably not. Go and see her. Thanks, Mum. Gonna be here forever. And he's no good on his own. Hmm? On a hand? I can manage. Here. Whoa, what's this for? Get your rent paid. Don't want to see you on the streets. So you have got a conscience. Look, a lot of things have gone down that shouldn't have. I can't turn back the clock, but I wanted to help. Should I ask where this came from? Just take it. No strings. No strings. Oh, yeah, so we'll go for that drink tonight. Somewhere local, and you take her to one of your fancy places. I'm really sorry. A friend of mine called. I hadn't seen her for ages, and I said I'd go for a drink with her. Is that all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I mean, we can go for a beer anytime. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get out of it, man. Yeah. Next week? Yes, cool. Thursday? Yes. So, are we sticking with the mineral water, or can we attempt to with something a little bit stronger? Sam? Oh, sorry. What did you say? <laughs> You're right. It's just, um, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Okay. Look, I'll, uh, I'll catch the chase. You and me. Very flattering. And I'm really enjoying it and everything, but... But? But I'm older than you. And we work together. And I really don't want to be mocked about. Right. You know, maybe this is what you do. You know, you turn up somewhere new and then you make eyes at the first woman you see and then you just have a laugh with the lads about it afterwards. You know what, that, that is actually quite offensive. If I'm making eyes at you, Sam, it's because I like you. A lot. And for the record, I've never been out with anyone I've worked with before. In fact, I haven't been out with many people at all. Three serious relationships. 
or long term, please don't tell the lads. No. If anyone should be feeling insecure about this, it's me. Meaning? You and Phil, I don't want to get in the way of that. No, there's nothing between me and Phil. Okay, <laughs> so what are we arguing about? <laughs> We're not arguing. We're... Look, I like you, and I think you like me. I do. So where's the harm? Next time on The Bill. Charlotte hit Molly over the head with an iron bar. She thought that's how you solve an argument. She thought that because of what she saw Tom do to you. Day in, day out. This is Parker's place! Fern, I'm here to help you. I want to talk to Mickey.